My head on is there. Up shit, Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. Welcome to the Green Aqua Gallery. Uh, we're kicking off the 2019-2020 YouTube video series session with building this 450 liter tank that is empty. This is the only empty tank currently at the Green Aqua Gallery and we're gonna make this tank and we're gonna build it for you guys. Stay tuned, three episodes. Building a contest tank is an advanced topic. So if you guys are new to the channel, first of all, welcome. And secondly, you can check all the videos that we made previously for beginners and all the videos covering the different topics here uh, during the previous year of the Green Aqua YouTube video series. What is the purpose of the aquarium contest and why is an aquarium contest good for you guys? First of all, you can see where the international aquarium trend is going to. Secondly, you can show your own works and you can make yourself known a little bit. You can try your skills compared to the others. A contest tank is optimized for performance. You are making something that you're gonna make a photo of and you're gonna send that photo to the judges. That means that the tank should look good from the central position. First of all, the most important criteria is the recreation of a natural habitat for fish. The ADA judges and in general the contests are looking for wet layouts, which means that you're trying to recreate something that has the water element in it. I am a big fan of the diorama style and I'm a big fan of the dry layouts and this is why I made the cacti tank which Mr. Amano actually made an article about and he was telling everybody that he didn't expect the world of the deserts and the suaro cacti to be represented in an aquarium. Today we're gonna do another diorama style and I'm gonna move into the science fiction area which is one of my favorite styles. This is a very complicated topic with a lot of talk, a lot of images. We're not gonna build anything in this uh, video today. So if you do expect that, please check out the next week's videos because in three weeks, we're gonna be able to finish this scape. Today, we're only talking brainstorming and I'm gonna teach you how to build a beautiful contest tank from scratch. And I'm gonna have help in that. So we have here with us Evie Kedvesh. Hello. Welcome to Hello. the channel. Welcome to Green Aqua. Thank you. Basically, I'm a concept artist, uh, which means that I create um, environment, character, and prop concepts for films and video games. Evie is also famous for us aquascapers for another reason. And that another reason is the 2014 IAPLC winning work, Gregoire Wolinski's uh, Hidden Passage. I remember I received an email from a guy who did an interview with this guy. Who Gregoire? Did, yes, who did the scape, and uh, he told me that it was inspired by me. How do you come up with that idea, the Hidden Passage idea? I was uh, finishing uh, high school. I did everything to skip studying, you know, from, from the final exams, and this is how this idea came, just to create something for myself, completely for myself. I saw a picture on the internet about the Batu Caves in Malaysia. I was working on this, this piece like one month long. Oh, really? Yeah, eight hours a day. Oh my God. This is how I, yeah, I was a beginner at that time. You know, I couldn't work as fast as I can now. I'm gonna use this opportunity to shout out to, for you guys to check uh, her websites out. Hey, did you know anything about aquascaping before this? Well, I saw a few pictures, but I did not know that this is so so serious um, 
form of art. I asked her if she wants to take part of the most interesting project of mine in 2019, the most creative project of mine, rebuilding the 450 liter aquarium that we have in the gallery and that is currently empty. Actually, I had an idea. Okay. Me while we were talking that uh, I should make something with this um, empty mining scape. This is the most basic uh, step when I create a concept art. First, I have to decide what I want to tell. She came out with layout number one, which is actually my favorite. That's the, the type of layout that I chose. And then you've got, this is layout number yeah, two. two, which is also a nice layout. I really like the way that it's a triangle composition. These are like two circles uh, yeah. in there, which are leading your eye in the center always. Yeah. And, and they're always bringing you back into the center like this, in, in, into, the, yeah. into the point where the tree is, is, yeah. is the dominant element. And then she came up with a third idea and you can see the third idea now. You sent me um, a mood board, yeah. which I never heard of. You know, it's a basic look, the basic feeling I'm trying to, to achieve. And you've got several images of stone mines here, yeah. and you've got the very interesting trees. Uh, do you know the name of the yeah, tree? Yeah, this I'm... is uh, actually a dragon blood tree. Dragon blood. Uh, from Socotra. This was the basic inspiration for Avatar, for the planet Pandora. It's a natural park in China. We don't know the Chinese yeah, names, yeah. guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. You can comment below if you know the Chinese names, uh, you yeah. guys from China, you <laughs> probably I don't know, know how to pronounce it correctly, so I'm not saying that. that is... <laughs> we actually have an aquarium picture that we can show you, which was made about that valley. This cape was probably made of pagoda stone, and I really like that, so I kind of... That was the first change that I suggested yeah. to Evie. I don't know what's your opinion about it, and she's here for us now to talk about my ideas. Yeah. I sent her a letter like this. <laughs> yeah. I chose sketch number one, and then I started changing it because I, you know, like she never did aquariums before. I'm now uh, learning, you know, this kind, yeah. kind of stuff, what, what is possible, what is not, you know, because in Photoshop everything is possible, but not here. I've been working with a sculptor before. His name is Gergő Ammer. He sculpted basalt actually for me as well. We did this before the creation of Adam's Cave that you see on the picture right now. This project has already went so much over budget that I don't really want to ask for his help uh, in here. So we will have to work with what we have. If I have smaller pieces of pagoda stones and um, Aqua Deco was nice enough to uh, sponsor us with a lot of stones like that and we will choose smaller pieces and we will just glue them together one on the top of each other and then it's very interesting because you have the uh, mm -hmm. horizontal shape horizontal lines mm -hmm. the texture in that rock the color uh, of this one is a little bit different but I think it can work we need to have two sides and along those two sides we don't have too much space. Oh, there's a mosquito right there. We need to have some thin layer of rocks or maybe wood yeah. going on both sides and, and doing the perspective or like perspective like this for you guys. I'm having a problem with the reflection. Yeah. So if you see the side glasses, you always have reflection and you see the, mm -hmm. the plants from the actual aquarium reflect back yeah. from that. So ideally, I would love to cover the okay. whole left okay. side. You can actually not have the, the chasm or whatever uh, opening there is on the left side of the picture. You cannot have that go all the way down to the bottom because yeah. you will still have one fourth of some foreground and some, yeah. some, you need soil. I'm a little afraid of what's going to happen with that. Are we going to lose the perspective no, on no. this one? I, I will adjust uh, this one. Another thing that I want to do, and I explained that in the letter, I want to hide the back edges of the aquarium. Yeah because you've got a problem. If you see the back edges of the aquarium, then, then uh, you are realizing that you're looking at an aquarium. I actually sent this Photoshop image to her to explain on the left side and on the right side, the vertical line, the vertical red line is the edge of the aquarium. You can have something very high in the foreground, but you cannot have something very high in the background. Yeah. So you actually need to mimic the height with, with reduced scale to have the, the big tree in the foreground yeah. 
and then that can be very high a lot of details but in the background we're going to create that depth with with lower rocks yeah. i have an idea which i'm going to show it to you okay. uh, because we received also from aquadeco as a birthday present for the green aqua 10 year anniversary we received a very very nice handmade tree to you close your eyes please putting it in front of you so <laughs> all right <laughs> There we go. You can open, I, it. open it. Wait, wait wow. a sec. It has the same shape. Yeah. I'm gonna turn it for you guys to see it from the other side. So, so if you're looking at it, you have the these these. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, we don't see <laughs> Evie anymore. <laughs> How should I place this? This is a very good base. We can we can add more more roots on this side. You know to make uh, the the cave inside the tree. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this root in the aquarium and I'm gonna send you the picture okay. with the root inside the aquarium for you to see the perspective okay. already. Cool. We have the Bucephalandra types. These are uh -huh. a little bit reddish leaves. Oh, that's cool. And, and I can just put chunks of it in mm -hmm. here between the branches. I immediately thought that we have to use this to make it m look more sci-fi, you know? This is another plant which is green in color, obviously, because this is the Anubias uh, mini. You will have the same feeling by putting these yeah. uh, Bucephalandra types here, so you will ha you will actually see the leaves. Yeah, the other idea would be to just use moss on it. We could, uh, you know, mix these. This is the uh, Hydrocotyle verticillata, so which beautiful. sounds like a, like an yeah. Italian appetizer. Yeah. <laughs> Red plants like Alternantera reiniki mini, and these plants will actually bring up the uh, the uh, science fiction yeah. redness. That so we've got the, the new Rotala mini butterfly, which is a really nice uh, green aqua plant, wow. and it grows really small. But it has a very delicate structure, so this is a big contrast. Mm -hmm. This is the empty tank yeah. picture, which I sent you an email, which is really good because you can see the perspective here. Yeah. This picture was taken with a 24 millimeter lens. Mm -hmm. We usually doing it much wider, even to increase more perspective. I just want to show you this picture. You would probably think of it differently because you're a graphical yeah. artist. But it looks cool. Yeah. This is a very natural aquarium uh, made by uh, Josh Sim. He's gonna come to Green Aqua, guys, and he's gonna have a workshop. You have no idea how much you influenced <laughs> the world of aquariums throughout wow. the years. Because ever since you started doing that, and Gregoire has won the IAPSC in 2014, which was five years ago, we see lots of aquariums wow. with that idea, that cave idea. Love. He changed the whole yeah. hobby. <laughs> we, you know, we inspire each other, you know, always. I was also inspired by a photo, so. Yeah, okay. This is the never ending circle, yeah. <laughs> Second round. Uh, how much time did it pass since we last met? Well, two weeks, I two guess. Two weeks. And you came up with two drafts. Yeah, basically. So, ladies and gentlemen, first draft of whatever AV did. Yeah, applause. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you are probably the most creative person that I've ever met. How long did it take for you to do it? 12 hours, I guess. I can see that you kind of took all the important elements that we discussed in the previous session. Maybe the only thing that I thought that would need some change is the tree here. Yeah. Because I thought that the tree is too much in the background. You came up with this one. Yeah. I kind of think that it lost perspective in the foreground of the of the tree so i would suggest to return to the first version yeah. what do you say about that yeah maybe it's a little bit uh, more interesting i tried to put in the maximum you know in every single area of the image actually the guys told me that it looks like a completed aquarium and we should submit this to the iaplc as it is wow <laughs> Well,
let's see step by step what you did in those 12 hours. We just made a picture of the empty tank with the tree inside. Yeah. And then... Yeah, I really... You deleted the yeah. whole thing, right? Again, uh, yes, to, to make myself uh, easier to concentrate. You added the background... The background, yeah. ...cliffs for the horizon. Yeah. And then you added some more texture on the rocks. This is a panorama from... Uh, Roraima, yeah. It's, uh, it's the very famous that? mountain from Venezuela. Okay, so you took the famous Venezuelan mountain and you put it in the aquarium. Yeah. I like <laughs> because it looks like the pagoda stone you sent me. In real size, it looks like that. Absolutely. And then you added the, the cliffs. Yeah, one by one. And you've got the cave here. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, you know, I felt like there is something missing on that part of the image. And then you have the small stones in the foreground coming one by one. Okay, and then you have the Fissidens Fontanus moss. I'm sure you didn't know what you're adding, yeah, I but just, I sent you the pictures yeah. for it so you could use it. <laughs> I just call this a small, small pine, pine small tree. Small pine tree? Yeah. Okay, Fissidens. Yeah. There's another Latin word for you guys, Fissidens. And then you added the uh, Ricardia to the top. And then you added the Aerocalion and the crypts. You've got the tree now. Yeah. The red leaves are the Atenantera reiniki mini, and then you added the Bucephalandra leaves. And then we're moving to the... To the foreground. Foreground. Yeah. I was using real-life, uh, real-sized elements to create a miniature landscape, so it was, it was very, very funny. I just uh, had this idea that maybe I can break up this regular V shape with some kind of bigger element on the left side, and it, it, was, it was looking great, so... Okay. And then you added some Iceland mosses to the foreground. And it's gonna be a bit tricky to add these, but we agreed that I'm gonna try not to use any soil in the foreground, and I'm gonna try to use the moss from the glue itself in the foreground for a couple of centimeters. Green colored layers there are plants, so you can see where she added plants when you're looking at the layers on the right side of the image. Tell me about the reds, which are down. So, well, this was a real challenge because I had to place these very, very nice red areas to lead the eye again to the circle. It could look like uh, the leaves have fallen down the tree. And then we're moving to the details. Yeah, the small plants. This. this is the verticillata. This is the moss on wood. And some more overpainting by hand. This is the most fun part of the whole process, you know. Here's the final image. This is uh, what we have to build now. Yeah. Thanks again for being here with us and thanks for sharing your Thank you. it's uh, creative my... process with us. It was very interesting to see yeah. how a similar Photoshop uh, aquarium plan goes on. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks guys for staying here with this long and theoretical session, the first video in this new season. If you're new to the channel and didn't subscribe, please, please do so. And also please uh, hit the bell button to get notified of our future uploads. And until next week, Hardscape session, stay tuned. Bye. I'm really going to do that? No, I'm going to do something completely different. <laughs>